You're listening to 105.3 Afro FM, the first and only all English station. And we want to thank the news team for their presentation before this. Right now, we're joined by my man, Hinnock, for Ethiopian Investment Radio, right here on 105.3 Afro FM, your infotainment station. So I'm going to ask Hinnock, because we got a crowd in the studio today, so I'm going to ask Hinnock to introduce all of our guests, and uh, yeah, introduce yourself and tell everybody hi, Hinnock. It's the time for, uh, that's the way business goes, it's Ethiopian Investor Radio. I have a very strong group, distinguished uh, audience, uh, well, interviewees for you uh, to share their experience. Uh, we have uh, three gentlemen uh, from the IT industry, from the ICT industry. So I'm going to, without spending any more time, going to introduce them. The uh, first one is uh, Mr. Levi Girma. Uh, Levy has actually spent about 13 years in uh, all three sectors of the telecom business as an operator, as a network vendor, and a handset vendor. He started his telecom career with AT&T Wireless and served in different capacities until 2006, where he left AT&T Wireless as director of its international operations uh, to join another uh, telecom giant, uh, Nokia Networks, uh, now called NSN. And he was the country head for Nokia in Tanzania. He later transferred to uh, Nokia handset division, where he oversaw several countries within East Africa. And in 2008, he went. He came back to. Uh, he came back home to his native country, Ethiopia, um, and uh, established a company called Bravocom PLC, which uh, you have. You may have heard of uh, in in some of the advertising that company makes. He, uh, Bravocom is the Nokia's official distributor in Ethiopia. Uh, lastly, Levi Girma is one of the founders and leading members of ICTET, which is a private sector association established recently to promote the ICT sector in Ethiopia. Uh, please uh, join me in welcoming uh, Levi uh, to the to the show. Um, our next uh, in, uh, our next guest is Ato Siyum Baradid who has 18 plus years in the IT industry and has worked for many of the multinationals we all hear about in BBC and CNN and all of those uh, TV networks. Uh, he has worked in, uh, in all three continents, in Africa, in Europe, US and Canada. He's worked for Eurostar. Uh, some of you who have traveled in Europe may know Eurostar, the train networks, and he's been uh, instrumental in some of the work that happens in the IT that drives Eurostar. And he has also worked as a, in the consulting industry in banking and telecom and CRM, uh, supporting from the IT point of view also in the United States. He's also worked in Canada for about six years for a little company some of you may have heard of called Research in Motion, uh, the makers of BlackBerry. He is an Oracle specialist uh, in Ethiopia. He's actually much more known for another role he has taken in the past few years, which is as the head of the Millennium Commission in Ethiopia and uh, this happened because uh, he worked on the millennium in the, in Europe where uh, he was uh, he foregone he he decided to forego his responsibilities of partying of the millennium in and actually contributing something else and watching the networks around the world at the time so he came back and put a proposal together on how Ethiopia should uh, celebrate the millennium and he became the head of it so uh, finally, he he joined uh, a, a large company, ICT company called CMAC Incorporated, as a regional director for CMAC in Ethiopia and covering the whole Eastern Africa region. Uh, and he is also one of the founding members and leaders of the newly established ICTET. Last but not least, I would like to also introduce uh, Mr. Yilik Al Abate. And uh, Yilikal also is comes back from uh, European and American experience, where he has over 10 years experience in the technology and business. He has worked for uh, the very famous AIG, American Insurance Group, uh, as their, in their e-business group. And then uh, Liberty Mutual Reinsurance. Uh, he has also contributed much to the IT uh, work that the Richmond University does in the United States. And uh, he's worked for Analysis International also as a software engineer. He has now been back in Ethiopia for one year to contribute his uh, knowledge and experience back home. And he works with Atosium with CMAC Incorporated. So 
everybody i'd like to uh i'd like you to join me in, in uh, congratulating the return of all these experts into ethiopia uh and without further ado would actually start the conversation on the it uh in ethiopia it's an opportune time actually to talk about uh ict as is an ict conference going on a major one at that that is being promoted by the ministry as well uh but before we go into any of these details, you know, ICT is a, is a cute word that's being thrown around all over the place in Ethiopia and everywhere else. But can we start with some kind of a basic understanding of what ICT is and what it could mean? Any of you gentlemen? I would say that everybody probably has their own definition. The, the best way to look at it is it's an effective and efficient means of handling data, data. or information. Mm -hmm. So effective in the sense that it is it's the form factor how do you actually get the information mm -hmm. efficient is related to time so um, that's basically what ICT is the before people used to call it IT just information technology then you know there's the whole unified communication so that kind of was uh, put together and became ICT. So this would include obtaining information via phone, email, television, etc. So it's basically unifying it all. And now it's really pretty much called ICT outside the U.S. I, U.S. tends to still call it the IT sector. Yeah. Thank you, Levy. Uh, anybody else wants to add to that? Yeah. I would like to add... Um, so you? The, the, the commonly agreed definition of ICT is any product which is uh, uh, able to store, manipulate, retrieve, transmit, and receive electronic data uh, that way. That is, that's the simple and basic definition. Okay. So anything related, any product related to this, uh, the ones I mentioned, is ICT, basically. That's what uh, ICT does. Now, uh, we can talk about the definition all day then. I think it becomes even clearer uh, when we start talking about what it could mean for the economy, for the way people live and uh, improving the daily lives of the people in general. So if we can bring it down a little bit now and uh, maybe start talking about what could ICT mean for Ethiopia? Is it just a technical word or does it have any practical applications for the way people live their lives in Ethiopia? The, as you know, the Ethiopian population is, is, a, uh, is a developing country with people trying to get themselves out of uh, poverty. And 80% uh, of it is agrarian, so we are a farming country. And the government in the past few years, as you know, has been working in the education sector, in uh, health care, for example, and power to expand to a population, this 80 million of it dispersed all across 1.2 million square kilometers of land. What does all of this mean? Uh, what does ICT mean for all of this? ICT can mean quite a lot for the Ethiopian community society <coughs> in a sense that first and foremost, it, keeps, it can keep them in touch with what everybody else in the world is doing and you brought up a good point, Henok, about uh, what exactly does this mean for them with the current level of access they may have or contact they may have with it. Uh, my understanding would be that the first and foremost access people have or contact people have in Ethiopia with ICT is through their phones. Using their phones, many people will be able to communicate by SMS or calling somebody, and if they have a powerful enough phone, they can access internet on it, from which they can get information regarding their interests, uh, they can educate themselves about world events, uh, they can um, learn uh, information that interests them, whether that's their university studies, their work, uh, just by having access to something like a Google website, there's a vast wealth of information that people can access and makes them uh, uh, have up-to-date information and knowledge available at their fingertips. Uh, other than that, there's the computers that they can use for all kinds of purposes, uh, uh, writing documents, uh, designing websites, 
Okay, so this is from the people's point of view in terms of individually, but about how about as a country? So you, we spoke earlier about, for example, the GTP. So our objective as a government, as a people, as a country, in the next five years, double agriculture production in five years, for example, tall order. Uh, universal access to education, but not only access, but also quality of education. Um, healthcare, universal access. So what, in what way can ICT be transformative in that way? I would say ICT, considered infrastructure. Okay, you've got, you've got the roads. You can't really do much if you don't have roads. Uh, you've got um, electricity. You've got water. Okay, you've got uh, the airline industry, shipping industry. All these would be considered critical infrastructure. Okay, so ICT is considered critical infrastructure. It's an enabler. So, for example, I can for any of these industries you mentioned. Let's say agriculture. Now, ECX is around, but they use a lot of ICT tools. How do you disseminate information? So, for example, uh, I would agree with Yelkal. One of the biggest, I believe, is mobility in terms of enabling um, access to to the internet and information in general. So with SMS, for example, they can get up-to-date information on pricing. They can get information on weather alerts, those types. So that enables them to make decisions. So that's really what it is. It's enabling you to make decisions. So let's go healthcare. You'd see many countries, including Botswana, that has actually used um, ICT tools to provide healthcare in the sense that if the, if the guy is a kilometer, 500 kilometers away from a, from the capital city where maybe the biggest hospital would be just like in Ethiopia, you don't have to travel 500 kilometers. You know, they can take pictures from their phone, send images, uh, etc., and they would be able to decide, you know, this guy, he doesn't need to come here. He can go to the hospital that's 20 kilometers away instead. Education, you know, with, with all the different programs that, current, um, that are currently available, um, you, you add more, so you add additional programs. So, for example, a student who's in in a village would be able to actually uh, see videos, learn directly from different programs that are also provided in different countries. So, the level of education they get could actually be uh, a par. So, you don't have to worry that one area has better education than the other. I think those are the three, four areas that you mentioned but it basically consider it uh, consider it critical infrastructure uh, absolutely I think uh, you picked up a number of interesting things I remember uh, driving around all over the country and uh, seeing uh, ECX uh, price tickers in areas where I didn't expect to see them and in fact in many ways if you see the Ethiopian agriculture farmers are now starting to produce more and more for the market so they know what the prices are and this seems like a high-tech thing for people, but farmers actually these days know what the prices uh, uh, of uh, coffee in the New York market are. Uh, it, it, it seems uh, somewhat uh, weird for city folks like us nowadays, but if you go and speak to uh, all the Gavares out there, they actually, I mean, they may not understand the way the whole system works, but they know what coffee selling for in the cities nowadays and that is linked to the global market so we are as integrated as it can be so far as we've seen so far and people may not realize that and this is huge because it improves the the incomes of these farmers so i couldn't agree more uh so you want to add something basically what i see the gtp and the support the ict uh, as a support to that is any uh, massive project like this is a, a big undertaking. Uh, it requires the planning, uh, evaluation, implementation, and evaluation, monitoring. Everything has to be based on some kind of data collected. You cannot, uh, what, what's going to happen in, in 2015? Uh, you have to evaluate whatever you plan. For example, if you say the density of uh, uh, telecom per 100 uh, is 1.5, and I'm going to take it to 8 or the number of mobile, mobile, mobile phone users from 7 to 64. You have to somehow capture the data and evaluate it so that you, you, you can say that this plan has worked. <coughs> so this big, big uh, and a very uh, uh, ambitious project can also be, uh, you know, uh, evaluated. So that, that, that's one, one aspect of it. But as Levy said and Ilika, 